and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. As he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzlingly white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, this is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down the mountain, he charged them not to relate what had they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you've been in a situation where someone has said, to you, said something to you, and you looked at them and said, seriously? Are you kidding? Why bother me with that? You gotta be jiving. But one of the things about it is, what if that voice came from God? What if God asked you to follow? God asked you to love? God asked you to do something differently in your life than you ordinarily did it? This is the story of today's readings. We see in the book of Genesis, Abraham. Abraham and Sarah prayed for a son, and his son was given them, even when they thought they were far too old. With God's gift, life was good. But then the inspiration was there that this firstborn son is to be sacrificed. What could it mean? Would there be other sons? Why would God ask them of something like that? How terrible it would be to lose a child. And you heard the story that God did save Isaac's life. But it was the willingness, it was a test of faith for Abraham. Many of you probably have had a test of faith. Maybe as seriously as the death of a child, the death of a spouse. But one of the things that we do know is that God doesn't leave us in the midst of the pain, in the midst of all the many things that go wrong in life. Our reading from St. Paul says, if God is for us, who can be against us? And it is a test of our faith that we recognize God and God's hand in the midst of all the many things that are happening, guiding us, helping us, supporting us. These are the things that are gonna help us get through. As we come together to celebrate Lent, we don't walk alone. It isn't that we've gotta do all the sacrifice and we gotta please God and get God's attention. What we're called to do is to be able, in gratitude, recognize the God who loves us, the God who redeems us, the God who directs us. On the other side of the coin, we have Peter, James, and John, who God offers an opportunity to test their faith, to encourage their faith, to be able to say, this Jesus is the one. They followed him, they've come to believe. But one of the things about it is, it isn't just me and my Jesus. It isn't that we just stay there in the moment to be able to say, Lord, let us stay here. Peter, James, John, Moses, Elijah, you and me will be here forever. Now we have to move on from the mountain to be able to share what we've received because God has been good to us and we've got to share that experience with people who don't know God, people who are afraid, people who have been battered by life, friends or family. So as we come together, we recognize the goodness as we walk our, our journey of faith that we walk with God and that God supports us and we have something to share with one another.